Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, dear students, welcome back to lecture number 25 of macroeconomic course. पहले की तरह चंद मिनट के लिए हम पिछले लेक्चर पे बात करेंगे. We'll try to revise what we have learned in the previous class, and then we'll move forward uh, for today's topic of discussion. Uh, if you remember, हमने बात की थी. We started a new topic for discussion, and uh, that is the investment. Uh, and then we'll continue with the same topic in today's lecture also. Uh, we discussed that there are three type of uh, investment normally in uh, a country, in an economy. Uh, one is the business fixed investment, this ki humne baat ki, that is the investment uh, in the form of uh, equipment or con constructions or purchasing a new equipment. And then we have discussed the a second type of cost uh, investment is the residential investment, spending on houses, spending on residential invest, uh, residential facilities is also an inve investment. Then we talked about the third type of investment that was the inventory investment that is addition in the stock of goods uh, and uh, which are uh, already produced. So if we add up something in the stock and in the inventory, so that is known as the inventory investment. Uh, after discussing uh, those uh, three types of investment, we found that all investments uh, depends negatively on the interest rate, right? So we have uh, developed investment function and we have uh, derived investment curve, right? So that was the uh, negatively curve that whenever there is increase in the interest rate in the economy, usse investment mein kami vaakya ho jyoti hai. Jab invest interest rate mein kami vaakya hoti hai, to usse investment mein azafa hota hai toh. So we found that the investment and interest rate are negatively correlated with each other. Uh, we have a downward sloping investment function curve that as interest rate goes up, investment goes down and vice versa. So this was the first thing that we've done in the previous lecture, that we tried to develop our investment function and derived an investment function, our investment curve, which is negatively sloped. After that, uh, we have discussed that what are the factors uh, that are the things that can shift the investment function, right? So we have discussed the first thing that is the technological improvements, right? So whenever uh, there is improvement in technology, whenever we introduce a new technology in the production process, of course this affects the marginal productivity of capital, right? So when you new techniques introduce karte hai, new methods of production introduce karte hai, new equipment laate hai, new technology laate hai, usko employ karte, karte, employ karte hai apply karte in the production process. So what happens basically, it raises the marginal productivity of capital. What is the marginal productivity of capital? That is the addition in total output produced in the country and the economy due to one extra unit of uh, addition in total output produced in the economy due to one extra unit of capital. Agar aapne 100 unit capital ke lagai, 1000 unit output produced ki Agar if you want to add, if you add, you have added one more unit of capital, 101 unit, or say your output may have half hour, so 50 units are added with one more unit of capital in the total output. So that is the most, the marginal productivity of capital. That is change in output delta y over delta k. So technological improvements will change or raise the marginal productivity of capital and this in turn raises fixed business fixed investment right so the business fixed investment may have the investment curve will shift to the right side another factor that can shift the production and shift the investment function is the increase in population so when population goes up when there is increase in the population or the growth rate of population goes up what will happen 
this increase in population raises the demand for goods and services whenever there is increase in the demand of goods and services what will happen uh, there is an incentive for the firm to produce more to production badegi the production badegi to investment badegi investment ke badhne se the investment curve will shift right side so population increase or change in population has also an effect on the investment function and this and there is possibility that there it helps to increase the investment in the country and the economy and the in investment curve shift right what and the important factors uh, that can affect the investment in the country investment in the economy is the economic policies like uh, government can affect the level of investment government can change the level of investment by introducing different policies in the country and the economies uh, one is the corporate income tax the other is investment credit tax now uh, first we talk about iski humne baat ki thi corporate income tax basically is the tax is on profit right if profit of the investors are taxed by the government of course uh, the, there will be less incentive for the investor to invest uh, to increase their investment so as say what will happen and uh, this will reduce uh, the level of investment in the country in the economy the second uh, policy jiski humne baat ki thi that is investment tax credit now if government provides or the policy maker provides an incentive uh, in the form of tax credit to the investors what will happen this motivates this encourages investors uh, this in, uh, increase the level of capital with the investors so this induce or this helps the investor to increase the investment in the country and the economy to so, jab uh, investment tax credit ki facility provide karti hai government uh, investors ko to usse investment mein azafa hota hai aur investment ka jo hai will shift right word right so these are the factor jinki humne baat ki possible factor that can affect the investment in the country positively and shift the investment curve right side now we'll move uh, today's class uh, what we are going to learn second part we'll continue the same topic of discussion which is investment and uh, we'll try to learn more something about investment we'll try to learn in this in through this class other forms of investment that we have discussed briefly in the previous lecture that is the residential uh, investment or the inventory investment uski bhi aaj hum baat karenge but before we go to those uh, other two types of investment hum baat karenge aaj uh, stock market ki and we'll try to relate stock market with uh, james tobin and uh, ki jo theory hai q uh, uski baat usse relate karenge and then we'll try to relate the stock market and gdp and then see how uh, the change in the level of capital uh change in the stock of capital affect the level of investment in the country and the economy and after that we'll discuss the remaining two types of investment that is the residential investment the other is uh, inventory investment us pe baat karenge so the sequence of the today's class is that uh things that will shift the investment function we'll discuss some more factors some more parameters uh which are possible cause of the shift in investment function uski aaj hum baat karenge sabse pehle and then after that we will discuss baat karenge ki why investment rises during boom and why it falls during recessions right so we'll talk about what are the factors which are possible cause of increase in investment during boom and what are the factors what are the possible reasons why investment goes down in case of recession तो दिस इज द स्कोप ऑफ टूडेज लेक्चर आज का लेक्चर दो बातों दो चीजों पे मुश्तमिल है पहले हम बात करेंगे कि कौन से फैक्ट मजीद कुछ ऐसे फैक्टर्स हैं जो कि इन्वेस्टमेंट फंक्शन को शिफ्ट कर सकते हैं दूसरे पार्ट में आज बात करेंगे हम कि वट आर द फैक्टर्स वट आर द रीजन के वाई इन्वेस्टमेंट गोज अप इन बूम एंड गोज डाउन इन रिसेशन तो दिस इज दीक्वेंस ऑफ लेक्चर टूडे तो वी स्टार्ट फ्राम दिन Q and uh, Nobel laureate uh, uh, James Tobin have uh, given a value, have given a formula in the form of Tobin's Q. 
Now he talks about stock market and he related stock markets uh, with the level of investment. Now when we will talk about stock, what is stock referred? Stock mean that is the stock mean the the share the number of shares holders in in in, in a company in a corporations is known as the stock, right? So what 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 we mean by stock market? It is a market where shares are traded. Where those shares are traded, and it's known as the stock market, right? So by using these concepts, uh, this concept, Tobin, James Tobin, who is the Nobel laureate in economics, uh, he gave a Tobin's Q formula, and that is equal to the market value of installed capital over the replacement cost of installed capital, right? This is known as Tobin's Q. Now where? Uh, what is the numerator? Numerator is the stock market value of the economy's capital stock, right? So in the numerator, he has taken the stock market value. He has calculated, estimated the stock market value of economy's capital stock. Jitna bhi kisi economy mein capital available hai, agar uski hum stock market or uski value nikale and then divide it by that. Uh, the actual cost to replace the capital, replacement cost of installed capital. How much capital is needed to replace the existing capital goods that were purchased when stock was issued, right? So that is in the denominator. Now, after substituting these values of uh, the market value of the economy's capital stock and the actual cost to replace the capital goods, that were purchased when the stock was issued. If we substitute the values of these two uh, capital in the Tobin's Q equation, or the model, or the function, uh, we get uh, the Q value. Now, if we found the Q is greater than one, agar Q ki value ek se badi ho, to kya hoga? Firms buy more capital to raise the market value of their firms, right? So, in order to raise their value. In order to increase their value in the market, they will buy more capital, right? If Q is less than one, firms do not replace capital as it wears out. And in this case, their values will go down, right? So Q is very important indicator or parameter given by Tobin's in the name of Tobin's Q. Tells us how much whether firms buy capital or do not buy capital. Uh, it depends on the value of Q in order to in order to uh, keep or uh, in order to raise their value, in order to decrease their value. Now, how we can relate uh, the uh, Q theory, which is given by Rowe Tobin's Q, and the new classical theory that we have discussed last time, right? Just came the baat ki. Now, as we know that Q is equal to the market value of installed capital divided by the replacement cost of the installed capital. Now, if the stock market value of capital depends on the current and expected future profits of the capital. Now, the value or the stock market value of capital goods depends on the current and future expected profit of the capital. Now, if you remember from the previous class, when MPK is greater than the cost of capital, so how we calculated the profit rate in the previous class? If you remember, profit was equal to MPK minus the cost of capital, which was R plus. Uh, real interest rate plus depreciation, right? Here what we are saying, if MPK is greater than cost of capital, what will happen? The profit of the firm rate is high, which drives up the stock market value of the firms. So if the profit is more, so this will increase or uh, drives up the stock market value of the firms, which basically imply a high value of Q. So, what relationship hua? If MPK, the 
a rental real rental price of capital or the marginal productivity of capital is greater than the cost of capital so what happens uska uh, jo profit rate hai wo badh jayega jab profit rate badhega to this will drives up or increase the value of stock market of the firms right to jab ye surat hal hogi to usse kya hoga q value bhi badh jayegi implies high value of q so there is a positive relationship between the profit rate and the q value agar profit rate badhega to q value mein bhi azafa hoga agar profit rate mein kami waqe hogi to q value mein bhi kami waqe hogi so if mpk that is the marginal productivity of capital is less than the cost of capital what will happen then the firms are incurring losses they will bear loss right so their stock market value of firms goes down when their stock market value of firms goes down what will happen the q value is also low so the profit rate of the firms as well as the q value they are positively correlated there is a positive or direct relationship between these two parameters uh, whenever this profit rate goes up q also go up when profit rate goes down q will also go down so this is how we can explain the relationship between q theory and new classical theory as we described in the previous lecture how we can relate the two concepts uh, the stock market and gross domestic product what kind of relationship is there between the stock market of a country and a gross domestic product now one why one might expect a relationship between why economists why as a uh, individual uh, or household you expect that there is must be some relationship between uh, stock market and gross domestic product now there are different reasons different factors that can tell us why we can say that that the stock market and gross domestic product is related with each other one number one the important factor one of the important factor is that a wave of pessimism about the future profitability of capital would what will happen so people are pessimistic uh, they are pessimistic about the future value of uh, profitability of the capital whether capital will earn profit or not so they are pessimistic about that so when they are pessimistic about the future uh profitability of the capital then what will happen it would cause stock prices to fall so when if the people uh, or the household the firms are pessimistic about the future value future profit of the capital then what will happen this will cause the stock prices to fall jab stock prices mein kami waqe hogi what will happen it causes tobin's q to fall when tobin's cube ki value mein kami ka waqe hogi to what will happen this will shift the investment function down the investment level in the country will go down <clears throat> now and what will happen this will cause a negative effect on aggregate demand this will create a negative aggregate demand shock kya hua ke jab profitability ke bare mein log pessimist hain uh, a wave of pessimism about the future profitability of capital kya hoga usse उससे स्टॉक मार्केट की वैल्यू में कमी वाकई हो जाएगी जब स्टॉक मार्केट की वैल्यू काज स्टॉक प्राइसेस टू फॉल जब स्टॉक प्राइसेस में कमी वाकई होगी तो उससे टोबेंस क्यू की जो वैल्यू है उसमें कमी वाकई होगी जब टोबेंस क्यू की वैल्यू में कमी वाकई होगी तो दिस विल रिड्यूस द लेवल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द कंट्री एंड शिफ्ट द इन्वेस्टमेंट फंक्शन डाउन तो जब इन्वेस्टमेंट में कमी वाकई होगी तो क्या होगा आउटपुट में कमी वाकई होगी एम्प्लॉयमेंट में कमी वाकई होगी तो व्हाट विल हैपन उससे aggregate demand may kami waqe ho jayegi there will be negative aggregate demand shock in the economy so this is one of the factor jab aggregate demand mein kami waqe hogi to what will happen to uski production mein kami waqe hogi aur overall jo real uh, overall jo real gdp hai the growth rate of gross domestic product hai usme kami waqe ho jayegi so this is one of the factor which is the wave of pessimism about the future profitability of the capital it can affect the value or the stock prices 
اور جب سٹاک پرائیسز کو ایفیکٹ ہوتی ہیں تو نیچرلی دس ول ایفیکٹ دی لیول آف جی ڈی پی ان دا کنٹری ان دا اکانمی تو ہم نے یہ کہا کہ جب سٹاک مارکیٹ پرائیسز میں اضافہ ہوتا ہے کمی واقع ہوتی ہے تو جی ڈی پی میں بھی کمی واقع ہو جاتی ہے اینڈ دیٹ از ڈیو ٹو فال ان انویسٹمنٹ ڈیو ٹو فال ان ٹوبنس کیو ویلیو اینڈ دیٹ از ڈیو ٹو دی نیگیٹو ایگریگیٹ ڈیمانڈ شاک ان دی اکانمی سیکنڈ فیکٹر از فال ان دی سٹاک پرائیسز نو وین دیر از فال ان دی سٹاک پرائیسز واٹ ول ہیپن It reduces the household wealth. The wealth of the household will be reduced. When it is reduced, what will happen to the consumption function? Consumption function will shift downwards. Now, when consumption function shifts downward, when consumption will be reduced, this will again have a negative aggregate demand shock. So, aggregate demand may come in when the aggregate demand will go down to what will happen the overall level of uh, investment is may come in when investment se production may come in when and GDP may come in when so this is another factor that the stock prices ki kami hai wo kis ko effect karti hai it affects the household wealth household wealth may come in when the household کی ویلتھ میں کمی واقع ہو جاتی ہے ان کی دولت میں کمی واقع ہو جاتی ہے تو کیا ہوگا سہر ہے ان کی کنزمشن ایفیکٹ ہوگی ہاؤس ہول کی جب کنزمشن ایفیکٹ ہوگی تو کنزمشن فنکشن جو ہے وہ ڈاؤن ورڈ شفٹ ہو جائے گا جب کنزمشن فنکشن ڈاؤن ورڈ شفٹ ہوگا تو that shows the fall in aggregate demand in the economy تو جب aggregate demand میں کمی واقع ہو جاتی ہے this is known as the negative aggregate demand shock جب aggregate demand میں کمی واقع ہوئی تو پروڈکشن میں کمی واقع ہوگی انویسٹمنٹ میں کمی واقع ہوگی اور اوورال ملک میں کنٹری میں اکانومی میں جو لیول آف جی ڈی پی ہے گراس ڈومیسٹک پروڈکٹ ہے اس میں کمی واقع ہو جائے گی سو بائی دس ریزن وی کین سی دیٹ دی سٹاک مارکیٹ اینڈ جی ڈی پی آر ریلیٹڈ ود ایچ ادر تھرڈ پاسبلٹی کیا ہو سکتی ہے اے فال ان سٹاک پرائسز مائٹ ریفلیکٹ بیڈ نیوز about technology progress and long run economic growth there is possibility that uh, whenever we have a bad news about the stock market that the stock pricing are going down what will happen this can badly or negatively affect the technological progress right so jab as fall in stock prices negative effect hota hai on the technical progress on the technological progress to kya hoga Investor or firms use old method of production in the production process. They will escape from using new technology or modern technology because it is expensive, right? So what will happen? Uh, overall production may come in, investment may come in, and this will affect the long run economic growth of the country, of the economy. So this implies that جب لانگ رن اکنامک گروت ایفیکٹ ہوگی تو this implies that the aggregate supply and full employment output will be expanding more slowly than people had expected تو what will happen جب fall in stock prices can be a bad news for the technological progress تو جب technology progress نہیں کرے گی innovations نہیں آئے گی نئے methods of production نہیں آئیں گے this will affect the long run اکنامک گروت So what will happen? This implies that the aggregate supply, uh, aggregate supply and full employment output will be ex expanding very slowly. And then the people had expected it. So what will happen? The output people expect, the firm expect, that it will be more and more, 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 more and more. اور ملک ترقی کرے گا اور لوگوں کی سٹینڈ آف لیونگ بہتر ہو جائے گی بات سنس دا فال ان سٹاک پرائسز ہیز نیگیٹیولی اور بیڈلی ایفیکٹڈ دی ٹیکنالوجی آف دا کنٹری سو دین دیٹ ڈیو ٹو دیٹ فیکٹرز دیر از پاسبلٹی دیٹ دیٹ دی ایگریگیٹ سپلائی اور فل امپلائمنٹ آؤٹ پوٹ جو ہے اس حساب سے ایکسپینڈ نہیں کرے گی جس حساب سے ایکسپیکٹ کیا جا رہا تھا کہ دس دی لیول آف آؤٹ پوٹ ول گو اپ ٹو دس ایکسٹینٹ Now, this uh, diagram which you can see in front of you, this will tell you that how these two parameters, the variables uh, that we've just discussed, that stock market or gross domestic product 
how they are related with each other. So they are related with each other, very closely related. So you can see from this diagram, uh, uh, in most of the cases, not in all cases, not in all uh, years, in most of the years, if you see that if uh, uh, real GDP is going up, so stock market prices are also going up. Uh, but in some of the cases, the case is not true. But in most of the years, if you see, when a stock market is increasing, stock market value is increasing due to change in the prices, due to rise in the prices of stock market, also GDP is also increasing, right? Gross domestic product is also increasing. But uh, so this tells us uh, we can say that that there is a positive relationship, or there is a relationship between stock market. And gross domestic product exist in different countries or in different economies. Second factor, which can investment ko effect kar sakta hai, investment function ko shift kar sakta hai, is the financing constraint. That new classical theory assumed that firm can borrow to buy capital whenever doing whenever doing so is profitable, right? So new classical economists ye kehte hain, unki theory ye kehti hai. कि वो ज़ूम करते हैं कि फर्म्स कैन बाय और बारो कैपिटल व्हेन एवर इट इज नीडेड व्हेन इट एवर इट डिजायर्ड जब फर्म्स देखती हैं कि इफ दे इन्वेस्ट मोर दिस विल इंक्रीज द लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट दिस विल इंक्रीज द लेवल ऑफ कैपिटल इन द कंट्री इन द इकॉनमी तो व्हेन दे सी दैट व्हेन दे ऑब्जर्व दैट जब उनको पता है कि कैपिटल مزید कैपिटल लगाने से इन्वेस्टमेंट में इजाफा होगा Country grow karegi, economy grow karegi, so they can borrow capital from different sources. But the problem is that some firm faces financing constraint that limits on the amount they can borrow or otherwise raise in financial market. So they those financial constraints kya karti hai? They put limit on the investors, on the firms that they can borrow capital up to certain extent, up to certain amount. After that, they cannot borrow money. Uh, they can borrow, can cannot borrow capital. वो धार नहीं ले सकते capital up after this that point. Or if they want to raise capital, they have to go into the financial market. So what will happen? How this financing constraint affect the consumption and uh, investment function in the economy? Now suppose a recession reduces current profit. So what will happen in recession? जब रिसेशन की सूरत हाल होती है इकोनॉमीज में किसी कंट्री में किसी इकोनॉमी में तो व्हाट हैपन इन केस ऑफ रिसेशन इन केस ऑफ रिसेशन करंट प्रॉफिट गोज डाउन इफ फ्यूचर प्रॉफिट्स आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी हाई इट माइट बी वर्थ वाइल टू कंटिन्यू टू इन्वेस्ट नो इन केस ऑफ रिसेशन व्हेन द करंट प्रॉफिट आर गोइंग डाउन इफ इन्वेस्टर्स आर फर्म्स एक्सपेक्ट दैट फ्यूचर प्रॉफिट विल बी हाई it might be worthwhile to invest or to contribute or to continue to invest in the project but if firms faces financing constraint then firm might be unable to obtain funds due to current profit uh, current profit being low right to recession mein kya hua ki recession ki surat hal mein humne ye kaha ki in recession kya hota hai jo current profit of firms ka wo kam ho jata hai जब करंट प्रॉफिट कम होता है और फर्म एक्सपेक्ट करती हैं कि फ्यूचर में उनका प्रॉफिट बढ़ेगा हाउ दे देन इट इज वर्थ वाइल इट इज एडवाइजेबल फॉर द फर्म टू द फर्म्स टू इन्वेस्ट टू इंक्रीज इन्वेस्ट और टू इन्वेस्ट इन प्रोजेक्ट्स तो कैसे इन्वेस्ट करेंगे कैसे इन्वेस्टमेंट को बढ़ाएंगे क्योंकि उनके करंट प्रॉफिट तो कम है बिकॉज नॉर्मली uh, होता क्या है कि जब फर्म्स को प्रॉफिट होता है तो दैट प्रॉफिट इज यूज इन फ्यूचर इन्वेस्टमेंट तो ड्यू टू रिसेशन जब प्रॉफिट कम हुआ तो व्हाट इज द ऑप्शन लेफ्ट विद द फर्म्स टू इंक्रीज इन्वेस्टमेंट टू इंक्रीज द फ्यूचर प्रॉफिट द ओनली ऑप्शन विद द फर्म्स इज टू गेट कैपिटल और बारो कैपिटल फ्रॉम फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन बट इफ देर फाइनेंसिंग कंस्ट्रेंट If there are financing constraint on the firms to get uh, and getting capital, so what will happen? Then firms will be unable to obtain funds uh, and to increase the level of investment. So financing constraint affects negatively to the investment in the country or in the economies. So what will happen? If we increase the financing constraint, then 
اس سے انویسمنٹ میں کمی واقع ہوگی اور انویسمنٹ جو کرو ہے انویسمنٹ جو فنکشن ہے will shift left word انویسمنٹ میں ملک میں کمی واقع ہوگی so financing constraint and another important factors are parameter that can bring a shift in the investment function as I said to you in the beginning so we'll discuss some of the factors first uh, that are possible reason or cause of shifting the investment function now we'll come to the second part of uh, uh, lecture which is about uh, to discuss the some more forms of uh, investment as we described in the beginning of previous lecture ہم نے یہ کہا کہ تین طرح کی انویسمنٹ ہوتی ہے کسی کنٹری میں کسی کانومی میں بزنس فکس انویسمنٹ ریزیڈنشل انویسمنٹ اینڈ انوینٹری انویسمنٹ تو ہم نے ڈیٹیل میں ڈسکس کر لیا وی ہیو ڈسکس ان ڈیٹیل دی بزنس فکس انویسمنٹ اینڈ دا ریلیشن شپ آف فکس انویسمنٹ ود ریٹ آف انٹرسٹ ایز ویل ایز وی ہیو آلسو ڈسکس ان ڈیٹیل دی فیکٹرز دا پاسبل پیرامیٹرز دیٹ کین شفٹ دی انویسمنٹ فنکشن نو Uh, uh, we'll move to the second type of investment which is the residential investment and the flow of uh, re new residential investment IH uh, uh, depends on the relative price of housing so if we would like to determine what would be the level of uh, residential investment in the country which is IH so that depends on the relative prices of housing which is PH over P. PH is the price of housing over P is the general price level in the country and the economy. So uh, the residential investment which is IH depends what is the relative price of housing in the country and the economy. Now how we determine PH over P, how we determine the relative price. Now relative price of housing PH over P is determined by the supply and demand of housing, a uh, demand in the housing market, right? So what is the demand of houses? What is the supply of houses? That determines the relative price of, uh, that determines the relative price of housing and which in turn determines the, the which in turn de determines the supply of houses and level of investment in housing or level of residential investment in the country and the economy. So what we have said in this slide? We have said two things in this slide. We said two things in this slide. One, residential investment depends on uh, the relative price of housing which is houses which is PH over P. How this relative price is determined? PH over P which is the relative price is determined by the supply and demand in the fact market for existing house. So what is the demand? What is the supply of existing houses? That determines the relative price of the houses. So that relative price in turn uh, further determines the supply of housing in the country and the economy which also determines the level of investment in the country and the economy. How residential investment is determined? Uh, so first of all, we'll see how the relative price is determined and then which in turn determine the supply of houses and then which affect the level of investment in the country and the economy. As we know that whenever we talk about any market, it has two sides. One, the supply. On the other side, demand. So here again, if we are talking about market for housing, so we need to talk about the supply of housing on one side. On the other side, we have to talk about the demand for housing to determine their relative price, right? So as we know that the supply, we assume that the supply of housing is fixed. So that's why we have vertical supply curve, which you are seeing in the diagram. Mein. And as far as the demand for housing is concerned, it is negatively related to their relative price. If prices goes up, the demand of houses goes down. If prices goes down, demand of housing will go up. So we have a negatively sloped demand curve for housing. Now, when you have these two curves, if you see in the diagram, both of these two curves are intersecting each other. 
uh, at a point, you can say they are intersecting at a point A. Now this point A determines the equilibrium, uh, equilibrium in the housing market and which in turn determines the equilibrium level of uh, prices, the equilibrium price of houses then determines the residence investment. Now this, this is the equilibrium uh, price of housing and this is the level of uh, residential investment investment right so demand and supply of housing determines two things one the equilibrium price of houses and then equilibrium price of houses determines the level of uh, uh, residential investment in the country and the economy Uh, how residential investment is determined, we'll continue with that in this slide again. If you look at, here we have two graphs, A and B. If you look at in the first graph, and uh, that is about the market of housing. Uh, on y-axis we're measuring the relative price of housing. On x-axis we're measuring the capital, stock of housing, uh, stock of housing capital. Uh, supply is given, is vertical, demand for housing is negatively sloped both intersect at the point A. Now this is the point. Now corresponding to this point, uh, if you look at the other graph, uh, we have on vertical axis measuring the relative price. On x-axis we are measuring the flow of residential investment. Now corresponding to this point, we have a point in diagram B, which is B, right? Now suppose what will happen if the demand for housing will go up, so what will happen? The demand curve will shift rightward, if you look this diagram A, so the demand curve has shifted to the right uh, with the red color line and this intersects the supply now at another point, this you can call this point C. Now what happens to the prices of housing? Prices of housing goes up. The prices bringing to kya hoga? Investors or supplier will li would like to supply more. They would like to build more houses. They would like to supply more houses in the market because the price has increased. The price bringing to kya? Incentive milta na producers ko. Incentive milta firms could produce more to supply more in the market, right? So when relative price of housing is going up, so what will happen in the diagram B? The supply will also go up right uh, and we'll get another point uh, this point a uh, d now if we combine these two points b and d in diagram b so this will give us the supply curve for housing uh, this determines the level or flow of residential investment kaise aap dekhe ki jab prices uh, thi kam when prices were low we have the investment level which is IH naught but when prices relative price of housing goes up due to increase in demand the demand body to prices naturally bring housing wale okay excess demand creates pressure on prices to push up the prices bring to supply bargaining incentive milega producer ko zyada produce karne ka supply karne ka market mein so, when housing ki relative price mein azafa hota hai, what will happen to the residential investment? The flow of residential investment will jayegi aur supply mein azafa ho jayega. So, investment will go up from IH1 to IH, IH0 to IH1. And we get another point D. If we combine these two points B and D, we will get a supply curve of housing. How much houses are being supplied? at different price level in the country and the economy and this is how we can determine the flow of residential investment so kya natija nikla when the supply of housing or the residential investment depends on the relative pricing of housing and further we said that the relative prices of housing is are determined by the market of housing with the demand and supply of housing right so which in turn 
when we have an equilibrium price determined by the market supply and demand of housing which uh, we, which in turn determine the level of residential investment in the country in the economy right so with the help of the change in the relative whenever there is a change in the level of demand of housing jab demand mein izafa hota hai ya kami hoti hai that affects the level of relative prices of housing in the country and the economy to yahan is diagram mein jab humne ye dekha ki when we have increased the demand of housing so demand curve ka shift ho gaya rightward the demand curve has shifted rightward so which pushes the price up if you look at at the existing price level agar aap dekhe to what is happening at the existing relative prices there is excess demand for housing so whenever there is excess demand for housing what will happen to the prices prices goes up जब प्राइसेस बढ़ेंगी तो क्या होगा हाउसिंग की प्राइसेस बढ़ेंगी दिस विल प्रोवाइड एन इंसेंटिव फॉर द फर्म्स जो कि इन्वेस्टर हैं इन द हाउसिंग सेक्टर सो व्हाट विल हैपन दे विल इन्वेस्ट मोर दे विल प्रोड्यूस मोर दे विल बिल्ड मोर हाउसेस दे विल सप्लाई मोर हाउसेस इन द मार्केट विद इंक्रीज इन सप्लाई सो दिस विल इंक्रीज द फ्लो ऑफ रेजिडेंशियल इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द कंट्री राइट तो विच इज क्लियर एंड एविडेंट फ्रॉम डायग्राम बी की विद इंक्रीज इन रेलटिव प्राइस ऑफ हाउसिंग द लेवल ऑफ और द फ्लो ऑफ रेजिडेंशियल इन्वेस्टमेंट हैज इंक्रीज फ्रॉम आई एच नॉट टू आई एच वन इन द कंट्री इन द इकोनॉमी सो वी कैन से दैट वी कैन कंक्लूड दैट दैट द रेलटिव प्राइस ऑफ हाउसिंग और हाउसेज डिटर्मिन द लेवल ऑफ residential investment in the country in the economy now we'll talk about the tax treatment of uh, housing how policy maker how tax can affect the level of residential investment in the country in the economy the tax code in effect subsidizes ho home ownership by allowing people to deduct mortgage interest rate right so the tax code the policy of the government basically provides subsidy to the home ownership by allowing them to deduct the mortgage interest rate which they are paying to the government which they are paying to back to the banks right so usme se kam kar de right what will happen ye jo deduction hai this deduction applies to the nominal mortgage rate so this subsidy is higher when inflation and nominal mortgage rates are high jab inflation zyada hoga mortgage rate zyada hoga so ye deduction rate bhi kya hoga the subsidy kya hogi zyada hogi then when they are as compared to when inflation and mortgage rates are low jab inflation aur mortgage rate mein kami waqia hogi to is subsidy mein bhi kami waqia ho jayegi jab inflation mein izafa hoga mortgage rate mein izafa hoga to what will happen this subsidy will also go up so what will happen when the subsidy will go up some economists think that this subsidy causes over investment in housing relative to the other forms of capital to is subsidy se kuch economists ka ye khayal hai wo ye kehte hain ki agar ye subsidy is tarah ki subsidy provide ki jaye sector ko to what will happen this will create an over investment in this sector right but eliminating this mortgage interest deduction would be politically difficult now it is difficult you can't eliminate because it would pre put pressure on the government on the policy maker by the people by the resident by the households in the country and the economy right so it is difficult ke is mortgage ko aap completely eliminate kar dein khatam kar dein jo aapne interest deduction uh, ki facility provide ki hai and this is a kind of subsidy to the home ownership आर टू दी हाउस टू दी ऑनर्स ऑफ दी हाउसेस उनको सब्सिडी मिलती है कि वो मोटगेज जो इंटरेस्ट रेट है जो आपने उन्होंने मोटगेज कराई हुई है फॉर दर हाउसेज उस पे जो इंटरेस्ट रेट है उसको डिडक्ट करके देन दे कैन पे द रिमेनिंग अमाउंट तो दिस विल प्रोवाइड अ सब्सिडी एंड दिस हेल्प टू इंक्रीज द लेवल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द कंट्री इन द इकोनॉमी इन द हाउसिंग सेक्टर now we'll come to the second part of a uh, second uh, third form of investment uh, which is the in inventory investment uh, we'll explain that now we have explained two types of investment already business fixed investment ki bhi humne baat kar li 
And then we have talked about the inventory investment and the factors that can affect the residential investment. Third type of investment is the inventory investment. Inventory investment is only about 1% of GDP in the country, in the economies. Especially here we are talking about U.S. economy. So in U.S. economy, the inventory investment is only about 1% of GDP. But in the typical recession, more than half of the fall in spending is due to fall in the inventory investment. So jab kisi mulk mein recession aata hai, slow down hoti economic activity, output mein kami vaakya hoti, employment mein kami vaakya hoti, unemployment mein zaafa hoti, inflation zyada ho jata hai, so what happens? Then half of the spending, fall in spending is due to fall in the inventory investment. So, उसमें ये कहा जाता है उसमें ये एग्रीमेंट है मांग इकोनॉमिस्ट के जब जाहिर है जब आप रिसेशन की बात करते हैं तो उसमें क्या होता है इन रिसेशन में जब की बात करते हैं उसमें आउटपुट में कमी वाक होती है इन्वेस्टमेंट में कमी वाक होती है एम्प्लॉयमेंट में कमी वाक होती है अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट में इजाफा होता है तो जब रिसेशन होता है तो ओवरऑल स्पेंडिंग में कमी वाक होती है इकोनॉमी में एग्रीगेट डिमांड में कमी वाक होती है राइट जब फॉल इन स्पेंडिंग होता है तो ये कहा जाता है कि वन हाफ ऑफ द फॉल इन स्पेंडिंग इज ड्यू टू द फॉल इन इन्वेंट्री इन्वेस्टमेंट तो इन्वेंट्री इन्वेस्टमेंट में कमी की वजह से जो स्पेंडिंग में कमी इज द फैक्टर इज द रीजन ऑफ फॉल इन स्पेंडिंग इन रिसेशन अगर आपके पास कहने का मकसद ये है कि अगर आपके पास काफी सारा स्टॉक मौजूद हो इन द इन्वेंट्री तो जब इन्वेस्टमेंट आउटपुट में कमी वाक होती है उससे स्पेंडिंग में कमी वाक होती है तो यू कैन मीट दैट रिक्वायरमेंट आप उस कमी को पूरा कर सकते हैं स्टॉक इफ इट इज इन इन्वेंट्री अवेलेबल विद यू तो अगर वो स्टॉक में ऑलरेडी नहीं है स्टॉक जो इन्वेंट्री इन्वेस्टमेंट है उसमें ऑलरेडी कमी वाक हो गई है तो दिस कुड बी ए रीजन आप कह सकते हैं कि आधे से ज्यादा जो फॉल इन स्पेंडिंग हुआ है रिसेशन की सूरत हाल में दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द फॉल इन इन्वेंट्री अगर इन्वेंट्री में इजाफा हो इन्वेंट्री आपकी ज्यादा पड़ी हो तो आप उसको यूज कर सकते हैं रिसेशन टू सप्लीमेंट द फॉल इन स्पेंडिंग इन द कंट्री इन द इकोनॉमी तो इन्वेंट्री में जब कमी वाक होती है तो दैट कैन बिकम ए काज ऑफ फॉल इन स्पेंडिंग ड्यू रिसेशन इन द कंट्री इन द इकोनॉमीज नो What are the motives? Uh, what are the objective uh, for holding inventories? Why are they kept in inventories? Why people? Why investors? Why firms hold inventories? Uh, or why they invest in holding uh, stock with themselves? What are the reasons? What are the objective? What are the factors? Kis purpose ke liye inventories ko hold kiya jata hai? What are the factors behind that? We'll discuss those factors now one by one. Now the first factor that is uh, the cause of holding inventory is the production smoothing. If you want to make production smooth, your production goes smooth over the time period, the firms hold inventories. Uh, as we know that uh, the sales fluctuates frequently, sometimes sales goes up, sometimes sales goes down, right? So that fluctuation basically and the helps or motivates the firms to hold inventory inventories with themselves but many firms find it cheaper to produce at a steady state so we can say that when sales are less than production kya hoga inventories will rise yani ki jo aapne production ki hai jo aapne supply ki hai jitni cheezon ko out market mein उतने की सेल नहीं हो रही जब सेल आपकी कम है प्रोडक्शन से सप्लाई से कम है तो क्या होगा जो आपके पास लेफ्ट ओवर आउटपुट है प्रोडक्शन उसको क्या करेंगे यू विल ऐड अप इन द स्टॉक इन द इन्वेंट्री राइट तो इन्वेंट्रीज विल राइज व्हेन सेल्स गोज अप जब सेल्स में इजाफा हो जाएगा देन द प्रोडक्शन प्रोडक्शन कम है सेल्स ज्यादा है तो वट विल हैपन हाउ यू विल मेक दिस शॉर्ट फॉल हाउ यू मेक दिस एक्सेस डिमैंड राइट हाउ यू विल मेक दिस शॉर्टेज You will meet from inventories. So, क्या होगा inventories कम हो जाएंगी So, sales plays very important role in holding inventories, right? So, the first objective, the first purpose of the firms to hold inventory is to make their production smooth, right? So, if they want to make the production smooth, so they need to hold inventories. They need to hold 
stock in the form of inventories, right? So they can use that when their sales are less are more than the production. They can build more inventories when their sales are less than production. They can reduce the inventories. There will be fall in inventories when sales are greater than production. So this is one of the factors that motivates firms to hold inventories. Second, inventories are used as a factor of production. So sometimes some firm use these inventories uh, as a factor of production. Inventories allows firms to operate more efficiently, more effectively if they have more inventories, if they have inventories with them. Sample spores, sample for real estate real estate uh, sample for retail sales pur pur purposes. So sometimes uh, firms hold inventories for the purpose of samples. They want to show it to the customers, show it to the household, show it to the buyers uh, of their product. So they hold inventories for the purpose of samples. Second, they hold inventories for the spare parts for when machine breakdown. Suppose in the production process, when the machine breaks down, so they can use in that inventory as a as a, as a backup, as a plan, right? This is the second motive. Third motive uh, for holding inventory is stock out avoidance, right? In order to prevent lost sales in the event of higher than expected demand. So what will happen? If जब आप production करते हैं as a producer as a firm कुछ चीज बनाते हैं supply करते हैं market में of course आपके certain targets होते हैं right you have certain targets in mind that this would be the price this would be the sale of the product right लेकिन what happens अगर आपकी sale जो है आपकी expectation से कम होती है if your sale is less than your expectation what will happen क्या होगा उस वक्त then you need, you can use, you can add or you can build uh, the leftover production which is not sold in the stock. Moreover, sometime if you expect the sale of your product goes up, is more than production, right? So what will happen? You can use that inventory uh, uh, and then use it for stock out abidance right so aap usko use kar sakte hain usko inventory ko istemal kar sakte hain wo jo sales mein azafa hua hai usko us azafe ko pura kar sakte hain if you have stock with with you as inventory fourth is work in progress so goods not yet completed are counted as a part of inventory so sometimes uh, when production is in process and you have not produced final goods in the market, supplied in the market, so then you can count them as a part of inventory, right? So when the production is in process, when the work is in progress, goods are being produced, right? So you count these goods which are in the production process, which are in the work progress, usko aap inventory mein count kar sakte hai. you can count them as a part of inventories, right? So this is another motive of holding in inventories. Now we'll discuss uh, the accelerator model uh, uh, for inventories. This is a simple theory that explains the behavior of inventory, that tells us how inventory behaves, inventory investment behaves, without endorsing any particular motive. So, abhi jo humne piche baat ki, humne kaha ke inventory ki kyon zarurat padti hai, why firms hold inventories with them? Uh, why they need inventory investment? They want why they do they want to do investment in inventory because they have certain motives, certain objective. Unki हमने बात की. अभी हम आप जो बताने जा रहे हैं आपको जो discuss करने जा रहे हैं आपके साथ वो ये है कि there is a model known as accelerator model or this model gives us a simple theory that tells us uh, explain to us the behavior of inventory investment how it behaves without keeping or without endorsing, without uh, any particular motive. So, without any motive, without any objective, this theory will tell us how 
Inventory investment behaves in the economy. How we can explain the behavior of inventory investment without keeping or endorsing any motives, any particular motives in mind? Uh, we are going to use certain notations for explaining this model. Uh, what are the notation? N is the stock of inventories. Delta N is the inventory investment or the change in the invent stock of inventory. We assume that firms hold a stock of inventories proportional to their output, right? So how much firms hold as an inventory? Uh, we assume that they assume a uh, they, they, they hold a certain proportion of their income, their output as a as an inventory, which is beta. So n is a proportional to output, n can be written as n is equal to beta y, where beta is an exogenous parameter reflecting firms' desired stock of inventory as a proportion of output. This beta is the proportion of output which is kept by the firms as inventory, as a stock of inventory, right? So we are assuming that each firm uh, hold a proportion of their output uh, with themselves as an inventory investment. Now what will happen? What is the result of that model? We are not going to into detail to drive uh, this model uh, so we'll come up with the final result. So what is the result of that model? That change in uh, stock, a change in a change in inventory, or the uh, delta n is the inventory investment depends on the level change in level of output, right? Inventory investment is proportion to change in the level of output in the country and the economy. So when output is rising, firms will start. What will happen? Kya hoga inventory investment ko? Jab output mein azafa hoga, when output mein tabdili vake hogi, when output is rising, the firm increase their inventories. So when output is falling down, firms allow their invest inventories to run down. Unke inventories mein kami vake. So according to this accelerator model, uh, uh, inventories, investment, depends on the level of output in the country and the economy and the level of output which they produce and supply in the market. So inventory investment is proportion to the level of output in the economy. Or you can say that inventory investment that is delta N is proportion to the change in the level of output. Right? So if when output is rising and uh, Y is rising, what will happen? their inventory will also go up. Uh, if output is, when output is going down, is falling down, firms allow their inventories to run down. Unke inventories may kami vake ho jayegi. Uh, you can see that, and the estimated relationship by using data, they said that uh, whenever there is one percent change in the level of output in, uh, in the economy or uh, produced by the firm, there will be 20% change in the level of inventory investment. Yani ki agar 1% azafa hota hai output mein, usse 20% azafa ho jata hai inventory investment mein. Right? So this is the relation what they have estimated uh, by using this uh, accelerator model. They said that I is equal to 0.2 delta Y. And if you look at this graph, you can see that uh, inventory investment fluctuates over time and it fluctuates, it depends on the level of GDP, gross domestic changes in the real GDP, changes in the gross domestic products. So whenever it is going up, the level of inventory investment will also go up. When it goes down, the level of inventory investment also goes down. So there is a positive relationship between inventory investment and change in the level of output, a change in the level of real GDP in the country, in the economy. Now how we can relate uh, the inventories with the real interest rate? What is the relationship between the real interest rate and the inventories in the country, in the economy? Now opportunity cost of holding goods in inventory is the rate of interest basically. The interest rate that could have been earned on the revenue from selling those goods. So the opportunity cost of holding inventories basically is the 
रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट अगर आप उसी इन्वेंट्री को जिसको आप होल्ड कर रहे हैं अगर आप उसको सेल करते हैं देन यू विल अर्न सर्टन रेवेन्यू उससे क्या मिलेगा आपको रेवेन्यू मिलेगा यू विल डिपॉजिट or you will put that revenue in the bank and you will earn rate of interest so the opportunity cost of holding inventory is the rate of interest yani ki aap sacrifice kar rahe hain rate of interest ko agar wohi cheez jo aapne hold ki hai inventory mein rakha hai apne paas usi ko agar aap bech de sell kar de to aapke paas revenue aa jayega jis pe aap rate of interest kama sakte ho but you have hold it that uh, with you as inventory so the opportunity cost of holding inventory basically holding goods in inventory is the rate of interest so we can say that inventory investment depends on the real interest rate in the country what will happen higher interest rate in the 1980s motivated many firms to adopt just in time production which is designed to reduce inventories so rate of interest agar zyada hoga उससे क्या होगा कि इंस्टेड ऑफ होल्डिंग गुड्स इन इन्वेंट्रीज यू विल प्रेफर टू सेल दो गुड्स इन द मार्केट आप उनको बेचने की कोशिश करेंगे जब आप बेचेंगे तो यू विल अर्न रेवेन्यू यू विल अर्न इंटरेस्ट रेट यू विल अर्न मोर मनी सो वट हैपन इन नाइनटीन एटीज इन यू एस इकानमी सो वट हाई इंटरेस्ट रेट मोटिवेटेड दर्म्स टू अडॉप्ट जस्ट अडॉप्ट जस्ट इन टाइम प्रोडक्शन which basically designed to reduce inventories in uh, with the firms right so we can say that the rate of interest and the level of inventory investment is negatively related so we can conclude that we can say that we have discussed all types of investment whether it is a business fixed investment or residential investment or inventory investment all sorts of investments uh, have a negative relationship with the investment and uh, with the rate of interest right so if interest rate goes up all kinds of investment goes down if rate of interest goes down level of investment goes up so since the total investment is the sum of all these types of investment it is the sum of fixed investment plus residential investment plus inventory investment so uh, whenever rate of interest goes up total investment also goes down in the country and the economy when rate of interest goes down rate of uh, level of investment goes up this is all about today's uh, lecture student i stop my lecture here today now before ending my lecture i will just summarize uh, in few minutes uh, okay, what we have learned in two days class aaj humne kya seekha we started to discuss the relationship of stock market with the gdp and where we have determined the q tobin's q value tobin q value kya hai it is the basically <coughs> ratio of the value of uh, capital stock available in the economy divided by the replaced install replacement cost of installed capital so if that q is greater than 1 so it means what will happen this will increase the level of investment in the country if it is less than 0 uh, less than 1 uh, uh, the level of uh, level of uh, investment goes down in the country in the economy and after that we have tried to de determine uske baad humne dekha ke what kind of relationship exist between stock market and gdp to humne ye kaha ki stock market aur gdp mein jo relationship hai wo aapas mein positive hai agar stock prices mein izafa hota hai to jo market value hai stock market ki uski capital ki usme izafa ho jayega jisse output mein izafa hoga investment mein izafa hoga production mein izafa hoga right to gdp mein izafa hoga and vice versa agar stock market ki prices mein kami waqe hoti hai usse real gdp mein kami waqe hoti after that after discussing the relationship between stock market and gdp we come to the second part of the lecture and which, uh, where we have discussed the residential investment right now we have seen that uh, that fluctuation in income affect demand or price of housing and incentive for residential investment so we can we have seen that the whenever there is change in the level of in income in the country that affect the level of residential investment and that is due to the change in the relative prices that 
residential investment depend on or is determined by the relative prices of housing that is pH over P right if relative pricing of housing goes up so what will happen the level of residential investment will also go up so this is what we and uh, we have discussed the factors which are possible causes of the change or shift in the residential investment function uh, uski bhi humne aaj baat ki and last pe humne discuss kiya the last form of investment which is the inventory investment why people or why firms hold inventories with themselves and we have discussed different motives of holding inventories with them teen char motives humne baat ki discuss kiye ki these are the main objectives or motives of the firm to hold inventories aur humne ye dekha uske baad humne ek model ki baat ki ki without uh, having any motives uh, there is a theory that tells us why people hold inventories with themselves humne dekha ki firms hold jo uh, jo inventory investment hai, is proportional to the level of output produced by the firm or produce uh, the level of output in the economy it is uh, inventory investment is proportion to change in the level of output agar output mein izafa ho jayega inventory investment mein izafa ho jayega agar output mein kami waqe hogi inventory investment mein bhi kami waqe ho jayegi so this is all about uh, today students so we have completed our chapter on investment yahan pe humne baat ki hai ke what is investment what are the types of investment what are the factors that determines investment us ki pe humne baat ki how investment function is uh, shifted leftward or rightward us ki humne baat ki so we have completed the discussion on the investment chapter i hope you have uh, understood what we have discussed please go back and look at the chapter from book i hope you will understand uh, in in totality so i stop my lecture here thank you so much uh, for giving me patience hearing till next time we meet god bless you allah hafiz